So here we go, let me guide you through this code. I'm going to load this library just for visualizing. And I'm going to create some fake data. I'm going to use 50 points. This X is going to be uniformly distributed. And I'm going to define the level of noise of our, our data. And now you can see here, the variable Y is going to be a straight line with a slope uh, one and with uh, intercept point three. And I'm going to uh, add that noise. Okay, if you take a look at this, let's create a data frame. Okay, the dots are not exactly in a line, so you have some scatter. And actually, if you use this fancy function geom smooth, uh, ggplot is, go is going to try to fit this not using a linear function, but using this uh, smooth polynomial. Okay, but in the end, you have something that that looks pretty much like a straight line. So imagine that we know uh, we know the slope and, and we want to estimate the intercept. So if we plot with a b line align with uh, slope 1 and intercept 0, then we get something like that. Uh, it's capturing the trend, but that's because we know exactly what is the slope, but it's not capturing the, the intercept. So let's try another one. This is a little bit better, and this is a little bit worse. And as you can see here, we, one strategy could be a star, whatever, and then move in this line until we are satisfied according to some criteria. Okay, the, the real value is 0.3, so if we plot this line over 0.3, it looks like half of the points are above and half of the points are below okay so whenever you're going to try to train an algorithm you need to define a loss function here i'm going to use the sum of square errors and uh, here i'm going to estimate just the intercept so just one weight which is going to be the bias of the neural network now this is a very uh, i would say poor man's neural network but follow me and here this is the value of y and this is the estimation that we're going to do according to a straight line so I know the slope and I'm going to estimate W0. I'm going to square this number because I don't want the positive uh, values here to be compensated with the negative value there. And I'm going to sum all these errors. Okay, so let's call this function and let's take a look at this. If the intercept is zero, I have a lot of error and it's 0.5. I'm closer, so the error is a little bit lower. If I choose one, then I'm, I'm above. Remember this plot here. So I'm pretty far from the data and that's why the error is larger. Okay, so this function is capturing more or less this visual idea that some lines are closer and some lines are far farther apart. Okay, so let's do this in, in a more systematic way. I'm going to create a vector of values of W0 from 0 to 0.8 and I'm going to increase every 0 0.001. Okay. I'm going to use this function s apply. I love this sort of functions. Essentially, the, the idea is that you take a vector and then you have a function with just one argument in this case, which is w0, and it creates a, a new vector in which it applies. That's why it's called that. Uh, that it applies this uh, every value of here to this function. So if I run this and I plot, you can see this nice uh, graph here. It's not surprising that this looks like a parabola, and this is because I'm plotting. Uh, this function and this function uh, versus w0 is a parabola so you can see here you have something which is a constant plus w0 square okay so oh, sorry uh, let me find where i am sorry okay let me find the minimum so i'm going to find the index which minimizes the error okay and let's plot this here and that value is 0.311, which is not exactly 0.3, but this is because uh, of the noise. So we're not going to end up with the exact value, but something which is approximately one. Okay, now let me introduce you uh, the gradient the same. Why I'm going to use a different algorithm. So here you can see that I have tried 801 points in order to have this curve, and then I've minimized this function with this width minimum. But this is not very efficient, especially in higher dimensions. So I'm going to use an alternative algorithm. I'm going to start with an initial guess. That's going to be zero, and I'm going to define a learning rate, in this case 0.05. Okay, this, these numbers are not relevant here, just the idea. I'm going to do an estimation of how far I am from the from the uh, actual point, this red point, and, and you're going to understand why I'm calling that gradient later. So let's run this. Just in case, if you compute the error here at zero, the error is 6.56, which is more or less there. Okay. So let's start with this point. I'm going to count how many iterations are going are we going to do. These are called epochs, and I'm going to plot that. Okay. I'm going to create this vector just for plotting later. And this is the algorithm itself. So I store the old value of the weight, I store the old value of the error of the weight, and the new value is going to be the old one, minus, and this minus is because I'm shifting in, in one direction. 
minus the learning rate times the gradient. And what is the gradient? The gradient is related to the slope. If you remember the definition of the derivative, when I'm here in this part of the curve, you can see that the slope here is very large. If I'm here very close, this is almost horizontal. So when I'm close to a minimum, uh, the derivative is zero. And you remember that from calculus. So the farther away I am in this case, the, the, the higher is the derivative. So the gradient basically is trying to estimate that derivative. Okay, so let's run this. And let's point the next, uh, let's run this. And let's uh, plot the next point. In this case, we have this black point here. Okay, this is a, a, a really mm, poor improvement. And the reason why the improvement is poor is because we have try to guess the initial value and the initial gradient okay so we are here let's store this this is not important okay this is just for plotting and and let's plot the new value so the old value was zero the new value of the weight is 0.05 not not much improvement okay and let's increase uh, the epoch so what i'm doing now is uh, run this inside the loop i'm not going to use a loop i'm just going to to mark here all all this code and remember that if you use control intro in in our studio, you're going to run that part. Okay, so I'm going to run that. Okay, Let's see you again. Let's run this, and the new value is here. As you can see, we are closer to 0.3 now. The old value was almost zero. The new value is better. The gradient is uh, still large, but not as large as before. Large was minus 30, and now the slope of this ten tangent is a little bit lower. So let's run this again. Okay, we're closer. Let's run this again closer again and as the gradient was negative here i have crossed this point but i didn't realize i i was i had crossed this point so now the gradient is positive so i i should go back and as you can see here this purple point is back again and then the next one and then the next one and after a few iterations you can see that i'm almost at the end so this point is uh, 0 0.310 and the previous value was was uh, 0 0.311 if i run this again the difference is in the four decimal part, so this is a very good approximation. So let's plot this final point. Okay, I've nailed the estimation performed by brute force. And what is interesting here is that with just 11 points, I'm probably 10 points, I have reached this minimum. Okay, what is this error? So this error is telling me that I cannot go below this point. And why is that? If you remember from above, I was adding some noise with a Gaussian distribution, and actually I'm using 50 points. So we have a lower bound in this error, and that lower bound is computed here. So if you take the noise, which is the standard deviation, and you square that, then you have the variance of the error, and you multiply this by 50, then you're adding basically the error introduced by adding those 50 random numbers, okay? If you compute this number, this is two. So uh, because of, uh, we've been kind of lucky because the, er the final error is actually lower than the error introduced with the number. But the idea of this calculation is to show you that we cannot go to zero. And the reason why is because we have errors in the data. Okay, let's plot this function. Sorry, this data frame that I've been collecting. If you take a look back at this point, then at each uh, iteration, I was saving the epoch and the error. Okay, so let's plot this. And this is the magic of gradient, gradient descent. The idea is that after a few iterations, the error drops almost to this uh, to this uh, asymptotic value. Okay, we can run this again. I have this code which uh, is, is basically the same, but now instead of starting at zero, I'm going to start at two, and the same idea. So let's plot the first point, and then let's do some iterations here. So the first point, the slope is very steep. And now the next point is closer and closer and closer. Oh, let's go back. Uh, let's go back. And here we go. Okay. So the final point is that you can see that the error is more or less as before. is a little bit lower than 2. And the exact value of the error should be around 2. Okay. So let's compare both plots. Here is the new uh, convergence of the method starting at, at, at weight equal 2. And this is the old one. So before I started at zero, which is, if you go back here, is closer. So zero is more or less starting here. Now I'm starting at two. And if I, if I use the iterative method as before, I have to try all these points until I realize I have a minimum. But now you can see that after three epochs, or four epochs in this case, I'm almost at a value which is close to the zero. Okay? This is not perfect, and I have to spend a lot of three epochs in order to converge. But after nine epochs, uh, you can see that, that the plot is pretty good. Okay? So this is the basic idea of gradient descent. 
Okay, this is uh, fast enough. So what happens in, in, in two dimensions? So what if instead of uh, trying to estimate the intercept, I try to estimate also the slope? As you can see here, I have to wait and I have to do calculations in two dimensions. So let's create a grid, as a couple of sequences, one for W0, one for W1. You can use a generalization of the S apply function, which is this M apply. This is not important. This is just for, for plotting. And now let's compute, uh, let's plot the error. And here we go. You can see now that instead of having a parabola, we have a sort of paraboloid. And the problem is, as we increase the number of dimensions, take a look at this. This is just a straight line. So imagine a neural network in which we have sigmoid functions and we have three hidden layers, each layer with 10 neurons. So the number of parameters is going to be huge. Actually, I, I cannot plot beyond a couple of parameters. But you can imagine that we're going to have something that is not going to be even a parabola. So it's going to be a very rough landscape. So applying this method of gradient descent is the, fast, the, the fastest way to implement that. But it's not that simple. Why? Because here, essentially, I'm computing the gradient by hand, but this is very cost expensive because I have to do that in any other direction. So let's recapitulate a little bit. This is the main idea. So we started with this function and we were trying to estimate the, the sum of square errors in two dimensions, but you can generalize this to any dimension. So in general, we have some estimation of our variable and the real variable from a data set. Remember that this is supervised learning. I'm going to compute this, uh, this function. I'm going to call that E. And the next step was uh, improving our estimation, a rough estimation with the old one. And we have this learning rate times the gradient. So, and this is how this uh, gradient descent is defined. So I'm going to take this increase in the value of the weight, which is the old one minus the one. This is like putting this all here, but this is the same formula. This alpha is the learning rate, and this is the gradient, okay? The difference here is that, in, in this case, everything is simple, because the curve is smith, smooth, but if you have something more rough, imagine that you have uh, several parameters and your data set is, is noisy, then your error landscape could be something like this. And this is dangerous for some reasons. One of the reasons is that you could end up falling in one of these minimum. For instance, you start with this slope, and then this one, and then this one, and then you realize that this is the minimum. But this is not the real minimum. The real minimum is around here. So what is happening there? The problem is that using just the slope is, is kind of dangerous. So one way to avoid that is using momentum. Momentum means that if I'm falling very fast, imagine that you have a kind of ball rolling down this, uh, this slope. If I'm falling very fast, then I'm going to leave this point, I'm going to jump to the other one. And and in, in the end, when the, the speed, the kinetic energy in, in physical terms is large, I could end up exploring this part, which is the most interesting one. Okay, in the learning algorithm, this is called the momentum. And essentially, the momentum is taking into account the variation of the gradient. So I'm, I'm trying to go farther than the local minimum. Typical values in neural networks are 0.25 for the learning rate and 0.9 for the momentum. Okay, but this is something that you have to test using cross-validation. And there are different, met different methods to estimate that. Uh, one is conjugate gradient, which is the, the most traditional one, but there are more sophisticated ones like Levenberg, Marquardt. I'm not going to go into those details, but you get the idea. The, the basic idea is that estimating an error function and then iterating the initial guess of the weights can move us with some caveats into the local minimum, which is going to minimize the error in our training. But still we have this question in mind. Okay, this example that I've shown you in R is in one dimension or two dimensions if we take into account the slope. But we will have tens of dimensions. First, we cannot plot the graph, so this is not going to happen. Then we cannot try a lot of values. And then computing the gradient is going to be uh, kind of difficult, especially when we have sigmoid functions. So in the next video, I'm going to, to unveil the answer to this question. But, but now this video is long enough. So let's stop it here.